So anything that we can do as a society to support parents to be as good as they can be is the right thing to do. If we're spending public money, and there is only one public purse, it's not a health purse or an education purse or a police purse or a, you know, a social set, there is only one public purse. And if we're spending public money, we should be spending it in those things that will give us the best return. We should be spending it in those things that are evidence, that work, that make a difference and challenge the issues that we have for Scotland in the 21st century. And some of the issues we have in Scotland for 21st century are violence, they are relationships, they're gender equality, they're access to alcohol and drugs. If we can't increase the services, we have to reduce the demand for services. And that's about needing fewer drug counsellors because we've got fewer drug addicts, needing fewer victim services because we've got fewer victims. And so it's about how we do that. And I'd, I'm confident that we've started the journey. We have an economy of scale in Scotland. There's only five million of us. We have a very rich history. The Scottish Enlightenment informed the world about how to examine things and how to pay close attention and understand what we know and act on that. I think we're at that stage again where Scotland understands the importance of early years. We're starting to articulate it now. We're speaking about we have an early years minister. We have an early years framework. We treat violence as a public health issue in Scotland, one of the few countries in the world to do that. That's very enlightened. We're starting to tackle violent, uh, alcohol. Um, that's very enlightened. So I'm confident that we have the knowledge, we have the skill and the right people. And what we need to do is just keep plugging away. It's about people and attitudes. And we need to change attitudes. And we need to support people who are doing the right thing. And there are more and more and more people doing the right thing. We're not alone anymore, thinking that we are the lone voice in this. Um, I, I mean, among some of the skills that I, I think that, that, that babies develop, that they will use throughout their life and will stand them in good stead throughout their life, resilience, their ability to deal with challenge, to make good decisions about themselves, to judge risk, to uh, get through the hard times. And those sort of skills, they can be acquired later on in life but it's very difficult to acquire them later on in life. And usually we only identify the need to acquire them in later life when something's going drastically wrong. And that will be offending or alcoholism or drug abuse or it could even be mental health and, and, and having challenges with mental health. And so those early years where we deliver that, that very first moment, I mean, I, I remember as a police officer, and my dad as well, but didn't realise you know, the importance of these things. But I remember... Suzanne Zedike, uh, who, who works at Dundee University, had suggested a, a, that I read this report. And it was about one of the most effective ways of encouraging brain development in a, in a baby is to smile at them. And sometimes they smile back. And so since she's told me that, I go around smiling at babies now to see if that happens, and it, it actually works. But, but it's, it's also true that if you're a mum or a parent who's living in an environment where it's, you find it hard to smile because there's not much to smile about, then that has a significant effect on that baby and that, 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 that toddler. And so anybody that is in contact and has some role in that baby or toddler's life needs to be consistent, needs to smile at them, needs to say the right things and do the right things, needs to spend quality time with them, needs to be attached to them. And so it, it will never be substitutes for parents, but if you work in a nursery, you can't underestimate the value that you're adding to that, that, that baby's life. You just might be the difference between that baby acquiring those skills or not acquiring those skills, which might be the difference to that, that adolescent taking risks and surviving, which might be the difference between that adult having good relationships and living well when they grow up and having a good life. The Danes speak about dandelion children. Those children, no matter how bad their upbringing is, no matter how bad their circumstances, they survive. But when we look at those dandelion children, there is a significant adult in their life usually. A granny or an aunt or a teacher or a nursery school teacher or a, a, a baby minder. It, it, there is somebody there who at that vital moment just does the right thing. And the right thing is what we know is the right thing. Quality time, smiling, speaking, spending time, loving kids is what it's really about, I think. One of the things that we did to, to, to was create a narrative about um, what we mean by early years and the connection to 
point of impact and violence. And we looked at a young man at 15 and a half who, who committed a murder. And we looked at his life from the day he was born. And, and we chose him only because we had some CCTV footage of, of the murder happening, not because we thought he was really bad. But when we looked at him, we found that um, before he was 15, he'd moved house, I think, 11 times. His mum had had to move house four of those times because of uh, uh, domestic abuse. His mum was an alcoholic. Um, the areas he lived in were some of the most deprived areas in, in, in Scotland and, and indeed the UK. Um, he had no supportive family around him at all. He had a, 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 an extended family that was wholly worthless when he had uncles who had previous convictions for violence and a whole range of things. And when he was a baby, that was obvious. When he was a toddler, it was obvious. But the radar wasn't smart enough to pick him up. When he was needing our help and couldn't ask for it, he didn't get it. And then when he started as an adolescent to annoy us, then we paid attention. And we stopped trying to protect the child and started wanting to punish an adult. And that's where we are in Scotland sometimes with a punitive notion that criminal justice will fix this. And you just have to look all around you in newspapers every day of the week and they're talking about we need to punish these young people more and they'll stop doing it. No, they won't because they don't know any better. Their sin is ignorance. And it's our responsibility that, you know, to, to, to banish the ignorance. The technical solution for ignorance is education. The social solution is relationships so that these young people understand when they're babies, we can pick up on that. That we can say, we might only have you in our, our day centre, our nursery, our primary school for seven hours a day, five days a week. But while you're with us, you'll get consistent, good relationships demonstrated to you. We will link in with other people around in this community to support you even when you're not here. We will, make the, we will do the best that we can for you. Because we, it's not about... It's not about taking kids out of that environment and putting them into another environment that we think is, is going to be better might not be. It's about saying, we'll support you and your mum and dad or your mum or your dad or your gran, whoever's looking after you to be as good as they can be. And that's what services need to be in Scotland for the 21st century. That's getting it right for every child, not just those ones that will be fine, but those ones that actually need our help.